The idea behind this video and this presentation is to discuss and present to you what is required from a thesis report. And the thesis report uh, is the main output, the main result from your thesis project, your main work at the end of your educational program, at bachelor level or at master level. And I think the typical way of starting such a presentation uh, would be to present to you the different parts of a thesis report, the structure of the thesis report, which is in the beginning you have an abstract, a summary of your whole report. It should be like a, a short text that summarizes uh, the content of the whole report. An introduction is aimed at leading the reader into the problem area and explaining the problem area that you uh, are actually addressing. And in the end, give some kind of thesis statement, uh, uh, kind of hypothesis that you aim to prove with your work. And also give some ideas about verifiable goals uh, that you are want to achieve in order to, to prove that this hypothesis is actually true. Uh, the related work is a, a summary and a description of what other researchers and other students have been doing in the same problem area that you are planning to address in your work. The theory is a development of theory that is necessary for the reader to understand the, the uh, building up of your experiments and your methods. Uh, and the description of the methods uh, it can be a description of uh, several methods and you need to motivate why you have been choosing uh, the specific method that you have used in your work. And the method then is a description of how you actually have been doing in order to achieve your results. The experiments in order to do an observation and, and get some experimental result on the output. And the result then, of course, uh, is a part of your report where you at a, at a quite high level and condensed way present uh, in terms of diagrams, in terms of, of pictures, the output and the outcome of your observations and your experiments. The discussion should be a, a critical uh, analysis of uh, your results uh, and uh, yeah, it should be critical. You should be able to be critical to your own output in order to analyze the outcome of your experiments. The conclusion then is the high level uh, outcome of your experiments in order to uh, show that you have actually been able to uh, prove that your thesis statement, your hypothesis is true, what you expected in the beginning. And the references is a list of uh, work that you have been using in order to explain uh, uh, the introduction to your theory, the related work, and, and explain how you relate to what other researchers have been doing. So it's a list of, of uh, reports and list of scientific uh, uh, works uh, such that it is possible for the reader to search in databases and search in, in library in order to find these uh, works. Um, the appendix in the end uh, could be some additional work, maybe some source code or some additional information that you think is suitable to add to your report. This was just a, a short introduction to the structure of a good thesis report and the content of the different parts uh, I'm planning to give more information about later on in this presentation. But before we do that, I would like to discuss more about uh, science and what is really meant by science and knowledge. How can we really know something and know that we know is really true? Uh, knowledge usually starts with some kind of qualified assumption about the reality, which is called a hypothesis, which is an idea and, we, and a qualified idea about uh, the reality and what could be true. And this leads to a statement that we, uh, we aim to prove that uh, this statement is true. But then what do we expect from in terms of proof that a statement is really true? Uh, and according to the logical positivism, uh, it means that 
we expect uh, a large uh, amount of empirical data, uh, empirical experiments or observations that all uh, are pointing in the same direction, indicating that this statement and this hypothesis is really true. Um, and we, we conduct these experiments, and the purpose of conducting these experiments is to verify that this statement and this hypothesis is true. But then, of course, it leads to the question of, of how many of these experiments and how much of empirical data do we actually need to gather that points in the same direction before we can say that this uh, statement is true and this hypothesis is true. Um, and thinking about that, is it really possible? Is it possible to really prove then that the statement is true? There was another uh, philosopher, a British philosopher born in Vienna, and he added a property to uh, the uh, science and on top of the logical positivism that is called falsification. And according to Popper, uh, must a scientific statement be formulated in such a way that it can become possible to also prove that it is wrong. So the, the possibility to prove that a uh, scientific statement is, is actually false and wrong is the important property of science. And according also to Popper, in, in relation to we, what we just discussed before, uh, is that this a scientific statement, it cannot be proven fully, 100% to be true, but it can be proven, fully proven that it is false, that it is wrong. Uh, this kind of makes sense because uh, it must take a lot of experiments, tremendous amount of experiments, infinite number of experiments to show that uh, a statement is true under all different kinds of circumstances. And it requires only to show for one circumstances that uh, this statement is wrong. Then you have also shown that the statement is wrong. So it kind of makes sense in some way. Uh, why do I discuss so much now about uh, this theory and this theoretical development about science? I do this because the experiments and the gathering of empirical data is actually the central part of a good thesis report. That you perform an experiment, that you gather uh, experimental data, that you uh, critically analyze and you draw the conclusion from these experiments in order to make it likely uh, you cannot prove it fully, but to make it likely that your statement, your thesis statement, is correct. To further give you an example of what I mean by gathering empirical data from an experiment in relation to hypothesis and uh, a thesis statement, a scientific statement, I would like to give you this simple example of uh, baking buns. And my assumption of reality and my, my hypothesis leads me to the statement that tells you that it takes less than six hours for one person to bake 150 buns. And then it's up to me to make a series of experiments in order to prove that this statement is, is true, or at, at least uh, to make it uh, likely that it is true. Uh, so, a series of experiments is done, baking 150 buns while the time is re registered and recorded. And we make also another experiment uh, where, where uh, baking is done for 6 hours and we are counting the number of buns that were um, produced during these 6 hours. We collect and we present the statistics from this empirical study of baking buns. Uh, but then, uh, we also come into the, the conclusion that it could be a good idea you know, to make a documentation about how did we actually proceed on baking these buns. What kind of recipe did we use? Because this can affect, of course, the time it takes. Um, how big were the buns? Uh, how did we count the buns? And how was the time registered? And so on and so on. Which will be then a, a description of the method that we have been using uh, for this experiment and during our study. Um, and the question always lies there, you know, how can we allow other uh, bun baking researchers to uh, repeat our experiment in bun baking? 
So I would say that the conclusion that we can draw from our bun baking experiment is that the methods that we have been using for collecting empirical data and how um, experiments and, and observations were done, they must be specifically described in your method description, your method section in the thesis report. And there you must provide enough information to allow other uh, researchers to repeat your uh, scientific experiments. Uh, other researchers, they must be able to verify or claim that your scientific statement, your thesis statement, are no longer true. This refers to the logical positivism or falsification. Uh, and then just think about, just think about if you were able to show that an object had been able to travel with a speed faster than light. And now to another example that is uh, more close to uh, design of electronics, design of systems and, and computer science is uh, a system uh, that is able to uh, read uh, the speed of road signs, the speed limits of road signs uh, with the use of camera, a machine vision system. And in this example we have been able to uh, indicate the methods of computation, the methods of uh, image processing. Uh, we have been describing them by the use of graphs, the data flow graphs, uh, and we have another graph that is showing how two parallel experiments has been done, one acquiring uh, images using a uh, uh, um, pre-bought commercial system camera uh, applying the uh, image processing algorithm and comparing with having partial implementations on FPGA and um, another part uh, of the software or the, the uh, computations running on, on a PC. And we are able to compare the, the results coming out of these two different paths of uh, computing the machine vision algorithms. And uh, this is the way that uh, the methods were chosen for this experiment and for this thesis. Uh, a good thesis report is also capable of um, discussing uh, other alternative methods that could have been used and you should be able also in a good report to uh, motivate the choice of method that you have been uh, applying in your, your study. Uh, this example is taken from uh, one of my master students, uh, uh, Ashkan Hashemi, Machine Vision. Uh, system on FPGA for recognition road signs written at our university in 2012. Something that is very important to keep in mind is that before you even start on a thesis project it needs to be properly defined in the beginning. Uh, you may start with uh, taking contact or making contact with, with a company or maybe with a professor at the university that you would like to work with and asking about uh, a thesis project. Uh, but before you start, there need to be a proper uh, description uh, of what is going to be done and what is going to be the expected output. And I think the output should be, in terms of result, should be divided into what is of interest for the, the companies uh, or, or industrially related output and what is a scientific output. Let's give an example. Uh, I have here a, a mobile phone. Let's say that the company is asking you to design a new mobile phone uh, that has uh, much better performance in terms of power consumption with much longer battery lifetime or it may be that it should be equipped with a much better camera uh, that maybe has a higher resolution um, or maybe uh, has better sensitivity to light or whatever. Um, but then keep in mind that just designing this mobile phone, this is not enough for a, a scientific result. You cannot build a, a good thesis report just on reporting that you actually designed a new mobile phone. Uh, I know it is very tempting and if some of you were able to design such a new phone 
then you would probably be very, very proud and you would come to the supervisor and show him that, hey, look, look at my mobile phone. It's very good. It's, it's, it's working very well, you know, and you have made some kind of, of uh, proof that it is working. But the thing is that it must be followed with some kind of scientific statement that says that by doing a design of a mobile phone, then uh, it will lead to a much less power consumption and much longer battery lifetime. Or by designing the camera this way, you will have much better signal to noise ratio for this camera and, sh and so on. And this kind of statement, scientific statements, then also needs to be proven be with the empirical data uh, study where you in those cases maybe uh, compare this mobile phone that you have been designing with other mobile phones that are available on the market comparing the, the signal to noise ratio for the camera and comparing the battery lifetime comparing the power consumption with other uh, uh, mobile phones available on the market and this is the scientific output being able to make these kind of conclusions and having uh, em gathered empirical data from which you can make these kind of conclusions and draw this analysis. As you can see, the definition of the project in the beginning, uh, defining the uh, expected uh, industrial results and defining expected scientific results from your thesis work is crucial for the quality of uh, the uh, your, your thesis work and uh, the definition of your work should be an iterative process together with you as a student and your your supervisor at university and possibly also together with a supervisor at the company where you are doing uh, your work uh, so uh, the thesis statement uh, that is something that should be defined very early in in the uh, chapter introduction of your thesis report and this is uh, what you are actually claiming in your report to be true uh, that a certain technique or certain method solves the problem that you address and in case of this mobile phone it could be that you claim that by doing the design of a mobile phone in a certain way uh, it will lead to a much lower uh, power consumption or maybe if you design the camera in a mobile phone in a certain way, it will lead to a much better signal to noise ratio. This is a, a typical thesis statement uh, that needs to be um, uh, made likely to be true in by the use of, of experiments and collecting empirical data from the experiments. Uh, so this thesis statement becomes your hypothesis that you aim to prove, you know, by conducting amount of experiments in your thesis project. The section called introduction in your thesis uh, report that comes quite early in your report is supposed to lead the, the reader uh, into the problem area that you aim to address in your thesis work and at the end of the introduction there should be a proper problem definition that addresses and defines the, the problem area properly that you are going to investigate uh, in your, your thesis. And it should be twofold. The first part should describe it, uh, describe the problem in a general way, uh, the problem area that you address, and the second part should limit your studies into a series of well-defined uh, list of verifiable goals. And the set of these goals, you know, uh, when they are being verified in terms of performing experiments and analyzing this experimental data, uh, it should be possible then to make it likely that your thesis statement is true. And your thesis statement sh should come together, it should be defined together with your problem uh, definition at the end of the introduction. Uh, so. Uh, one example to just exemplify how this list of verifiable goals could be written. I have chosen one report that was written by Ashkan Hashemi about a uh, machine vision system for the recognition of uh, road signs. For instance, here developing a speed sign recognition system uh, or recognition algor algorithm based on color segmentation and a mean using a minimum distance classifier. Uh, simulation of 
the develop algorithm and evaluate its performance under different situations in MATLAB. Implementation of free processing phase on FPGA to introduce a hardware-centric road sign recognition system. And implementing the VHDL module for communication interface between FPGA and the PCA and so on. So this list of verifiable goals, they need to be supported by the corresponding experiments and the result in the results section that comes later into your report. And the, the purpose of this list of verifiable goals is, is that if they are verified, uh, it should be possible then to make it likely that your thesis statement is actually true. Researchers and the scientific society is uh, commonly uh, organized into different scientific communities. And these communities, they arrange conferences and they uh, publish different journals. And the communities are related to different scientific areas, could be computer science, chemistry, uh, mechanics, electronics. They can be more narrow, or they can be a wider area uh, of, of science. Uh, but uh, the contributions from the, um, the corresponding researchers are published into conference proceedings and in journals. And uh, the individual researcher is doing uh, his contribution uh, to the society by publishing uh, his work. Um, and um, the individual researcher also, of course, needs to study already published work by reading uh, and accessing uh, these journals and conference proceedings in order to be able to position uh, the new scientific contribution with respect to what is already published and, and already known. A uh, basic requirement for scientific contribution is that it has a, uh, it's something new that is not known before. So that's why it's important to have a good access to already published work. Um, these databases, uh, they can sometimes be accessed for free, uh, called open access, or sometimes you need to have some kind of uh, uh, payment and agreement to be able to access these databases. But you can say that science is shared among the uh, scientific uh, society and the researchers and uh, research and the, 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 the contributions uh, are cumulative, something that you add on top of, of already existing knowledge. Uh, so uh, a scientific publication uh, must then present some new results and, and new knowledge. This is a basic uh, requirement. And uh, possibly it can be a review uh, publication, um, a review article that gives a structure to already existing mass of knowledge. Uh, this makes it important for all the publications to also include a review of the related research as we discussed, that you need to be aware of uh, what kind of knowledge is already there, you know, in the uh, scientific society, what is already known. And you need to be able to access the existing knowledge by searching these databases. And you should be able to make uh, a positioning of your own contribution with respect to what is already published. And it should, of course, be clear. You should clarify yourself uh, in your publication what is your scientific contribution. Related research is the chapter where you are presenting your results of a, a study of what is already known and what you have found in terms of existing publications within the uh, problem area that you address in your thesis work. And you should be able to show that you are aware of and that you know you have good knowledge about the existing, uh, existing level of knowledge in the problem area that you address. And you do that in the related research section. Uh, and this is basically a, a written description of uh, the knowledge that is already known uh, within the, the problem area that you address. And you should be able to, uh, along the line, when you describe this uh, already known uh, science, to give references, uh, in this case within brackets, uh, numbers within brackets, that refers to a list of references. 
scientific publications. And within this list of references, uh, um, the way that these references are written, they must contain enough of information so that someone e uh, easily can search databases, scientific databases, and find these publications. That is very crucial and very important. Uh, this is an example from one of my uh, master students that I supervised, uh, Ashkan Hashemi. And you should also keep in mind that uh, when you write your thesis report, this is the way that you can communicate your results and your contribution, your scientific contribution to the scientific communities and the scientific society. So keep this in mind. This is the way of communicating your contribution. Theories, uh, equations, formulas uh, are typically reviewed and explained in the chapter called Theory in your thesis report and it should be the theories that are necessary to understand uh, the target uh, problem area uh, the methods that you have chosen to use and uh, the experiments the results uh, and it should be a review of already existing theories and in those cases you should be very accurate and refer to the corresponding uh, scientific publications where you have found these formulas and developments previously existing or in case uh, you have developed this yourself you should be clear that this is something that you have developed yourself in this chapter uh, but be aware of that don't overwhelm when you do this description because uh, you don't write this because you want to impress someone you don't want to impress your supervisor by listing a lot of theories that are not necessary. Just keep to the kind of development and equations that are necessary for the reader to understand your results and your experiments and methods and all of that. Uh, so I have given you one example here. Uh, this is something that was written by another uh, master student that I supervised called uh, Anwar Kaiser and uh, this is an example of um, an equation and always give the equation a corresponding equation number so that you can refer to this equation when you describe them in the, the following text and he has also in this case uh, correctly referred to a scientific publication number 11 uh, in a list of references uh, this is a, a publication where he has found this uh, equation. Chapter results. Uh, this is where you present the outcome of your experiment, your experiments, uh, the data. And you should present without uh, adding too much of your own analysis and too much of your own uh, validation and thinking about this data. Just try to present the facts and present the facts in terms of of diagrams and, and tables that can be easily uh, overviewed because the results can usually be divided into different parts and if you start to present this in, in a large portion of, of text mass then the reader will, will lose the overview of the results so it is preferable if you can condense it into tables and diagrams and these tables and diagrams, uh, it is advisable and quite important, I would say, that you include very good explaining captions that has a, a sequence number. Uh, and these uh, captions, they should be uh, uh, self-explanatory enough, you know, so that it is possible to read just these captions of the tables and figures to understand what they are actually showing of the result. And just try to present the facts from your experiments and don't uh, include too much of analysis. Just the, the uh, empirical data that you have gathered from your experiments. And uh, the, the critical validation and the analysis of your results, that is something that will come later on in the section uh, called discussion, discussion or, or analysis. <clears throat> This is an example of how it can look like. It's uh, 
taken from uh, uh, a report written by Ashkan Hashemi about machine vision system capable of recognizing and reading uh, speed limits on road signs. And you see here a, a number of images ranging from A to F and you have a corresponding table uh, where you, uh, it is uh, explained the distance uh, to the uh, uh, speed sign and also what kind of focal length for the camera that has been used and if the system was able to recognize the, the speed sign and not. And you have a table here with a, a caption readable distance by focal length. Uh, and for the figures you have like images with different focal lengths so it's, it's showing the same speed sign but using different focal lengths in this case and uh, the, the sequence number means that you can refer to table 4 in the companion text and you can refer to figure 4 to 5 in the, in the companion text that is explaining these results so he has here a uh, a part of, the, of a text mass that is just presenting these results and explaining what the tables and the figures here are actually showing. Uh, this is another example, it's a table that is uh, presenting the uh, recognition success rate for different speed signs for uh, a large set of, of um, images and experiments that he has been doing, so he can present success rates from uh, 93 to uh, 97 percent and it is presented for the speed limits of 30, 50, 70 and, and 90 uh, kilometers per hour and the overall success rate and he can then have a companion text part where he explained that he has this table that gives you the success rate and referring to table number 40 and you have the corresponding uh, table and the sequence number 14 and there is a, a caption here a simple short and self-explanatory caption that says that recognition rate for different speed limits and it, it, this is enough for the reader to quickly understand that this is the success rate for different speed limits um, conclusion this is the chapter that comes at the end of your work and this is where you can verify and confirm that your thesis statement uh, is true or not if you have been able to uh, support the verifiable goals and to be able to make it likely uh, in terms of experimental data that should more or less prove or make it likely that your thesis statement is actually true uh, and these conclusions they may also uh, generalize your results to be able to, to, to be applicable on other areas of technology and, and other areas of science than what was actually targeted by your thesis work. This is an example that is taken from a master student, uh, Ying Bu Xiao, uh, and basically what he is describing here is that he has been able to verify that it was possible to design a hardware implementation for a minimum distance classifier that could be used for color segmentation. Color segmentation relevant for the recognition of speed signs. Abstract, that is the section that comes very early, in the very beginning of your thesis report. And uh, this is a short summary of your work. Uh, it should be a summary of your whole report, so it, will, it should include all of it ranging from, from theories that has been used and the methods, the results, the analysis and the conclusions that come out of this work. But it should be a summary, a short summary of this. And try to just summarize and don't try to explain anything you know, in, in the, the abstract. So the, the purpose for the abstract is that the reader should be able to very quickly get a quick overview and understand what is this report all about. And the abstract is something that is shown uh, uh, on these online databases before you even try to download an, uh, uh, the, the article itself. Even for the kind of databases where you, you have to pay to access the whole article, still they will show you the abstract so you, that you are able to understand what this article is all about what kind of scientific area it is addressing and problem it is addressing 
so be accurate and spend a lot of thinking and time on writing your abstract it is important and the same goes for your title of your work the the first that ever appears when you search on 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 the databases the first that appear is the title so this one is really crucial you know and it, sh it should be short but still it should be possible for you to uh, explain you what is your work all about so uh, this is an example of, of short titles uh, color segmentation on FPGA for automatic road sign recognition recognition by Ying Bushao and machine vision on FPGA for recognition of road signs by Ashkan Hashemi uh, I think just by reading these titles you get a very quick impression about what is the report all about <coughs> And now we come back to the general outline of the thesis report and I believe that we have been discussing all of these sections. Uh, we did not discuss the appendix in detail but these are in general one can say that if you think that there are some additional information that is relevant to add to the report such as uh, uh, data flow graphs or maybe uh, source code that is not relevant to include into figures and, 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 and tables, then you can add them as appendixes. We should learn from mistakes and we should learn from mistakes made by my previous students. So I have put down a list of the most common, at least in my mind, the most common pitfalls and mistakes that can risk leading to a, a not so good uh, thesis report and the first one I, I would like to mention is that if you are using almost only like web links uh, as references and no scientific references uh, then this is not good uh, we need to base the the, the uh, related work on scientific references and the difference between using a link to wikipedia for instance is that uh, what is written on Wikipedia is not validated? It's not. It has not been been reviewed by um, by the the scientific community. So it's it's not considered to be a valid scientific reference. So please, no Wikipedia links in the the reference list. We uh, we want scientific references that you can find on the scientific uh, databases available on the university. Uh, uh, library web pages. <coughs> if you uh, forget to add the, the properties and units uh, for for graphs and for tables, then this is a severe mistake that must be corrected. Uh, and if you are uh, copying material from internet, then you must make sure that first of all you must refer to this work and secondly you must be sure that you have the, the right, that you have a permission to copy this material by asking the authors. And uh, another uh, mistake is that uh, the, the methods and the experiments that were generating the results uh, are not properly described. So the chapter of method uh, is very important, not least to allow uh, other researchers to repeat your experiments. <clears throat> In some cases I've seen that the problem, problem definition is not properly written and there are no like verifiable goals uh, or there are vi verifiable goals but they do not correspond to the, the actual experiments and the results that comes out of the experiments. I sometimes see that there are no proper caption of, of figures and tables and no sequence numbers and maybe there are a proper caption and tables but there are no like references in the corresponding uh, mass of text that refer to these uh, figures and, and tables. This must also be included. And in the end I think uh, a common pitfall and mistake is that a student develop a, a prototype and he has spent a lot of time on, on explaining the design work of this prototype but there is simply no like scientific result there is no experiment done being done here so often these prototypes they are part of building up the experiment they are part of, of the method the experimental method 
So this is something that is necessary. You need to have scientific results that can be analyzed and and from which you can draw conclusion. And the results should support, you know, your your thesis statement. Uh, so keep this uh, list of common pitfalls and mistakes in mind, and I think it will help you a lot, actually. Now, keep in mind that you as a student are responsible for writing a good report based on solid results. This is your role as a student, and the supervisor, he is a supervisor, and he has a role of supervision that is different. So he is not the one who is going to generate the result for you or, or doing the, the writing of the report. This is your responsibility and your work. Uh, this must be said. And when the problem to address in your thesis work, when it has been defined in the early phase of your thesis project, then don't wait with the, the, um, the writing process of your thesis. Start to write on the introduction already in the beginning because you can already define and, and grasp the, the related uh, scientific work and, and lead the reader into the problem area that you are going to address. And this is something that, that you can do very early in your, your project. Um, and when you have also an idea about what kind of result that is expected and what kind of experiments is going to be done to generate these results, don't wait with writing the method uh, chapter. Start writing and explaining uh, the methods that you are planning to use and motivate why you have chosen these methods. Start with this very early in, in, in the uh, thesis project uh, process because then it is possible also to give this uh, written text to your supervisor and get some feedback, uh, not in the very late, but also in the beginning of your, your project on, on the report and your writing process. Um, and when you get your first results, uh, start to condense these results then into the tables, uh, uh, into figures and, and diagrams, because this will ease the communication with your supervisor. Give, give the supervisor a good overview of the results that you have been generating from your experiments, and then you can also have a, a good feedback on, on these results. And it will ease the, the meetings with your supervisor and it will make these meetings more, much more efficient. So, I mean, the, the, main, uh, the, the main message I want to give you here uh, is that don't wait until the very end of your thesis project when you start to write your, your, your report. Start with your report also uh, at the beginning and do this, you know, interleave together with your experimental work and as your, your project evolve during your project time. Um, and if you are able to follow uh, these simple guidelines and, and ideas that I have been presenting to you now in this lecture, I'm sure it will help you a lot, you know, on your way to a good and, and high quality thesis report. So I would just simply like to wish you good luck with your thesis project uh, and thank you for listening for this presentation.